Welcome back. In this video we're going to be adding the map to the game so when the player presses tab they will be able to see where the safe zone is and they'll be able to see where the next safe zone is going to be. So in a battle royale game people often use the map to figure out which direction they need to go in to get out of the storm. I also want to um, sort of correct one issue that we have which is that players can jump off the starter island. The easiest way to fix this is going to be to add some blocking volumes. So go ahead and uh, drag in a blocking volume and we're going to turn our snap sizes to something like 100 and just drag it down and it really doesn't have to be perfect just put it on the island like so and we just want it to block the edges of the island off so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the boxes like this you could be way more specific and get them perfect but I don't really care that much I'm just going to hit Control um, C and then Control V to copy and paste them, and then I'll select them. And I'll do the same, and then you can press E to rotate. Basically, just place these on your starter island. Otherwise, people in the game will be able to jump off the starter island, and we really don't want that to be in the game. Like that. And there we go. So now if I hit play, I can't get off the island. Okay, so before we make our map, we actually need to take a screenshot of the island. However, this is easier said than done, and it's going to require quite a lot of effort on our part. So, the first step is we want to sort of get rid of some of the things in the level. So, I had a weapon in my level. You want to get rid of the weapon if it's in your level. And um, also click on these two volumes here, the post process and light mass importance volumes, and we can just get rid of them. We really don't need them right now. Well, we can add them back later, but for now we really don't need them. Um... So what we're going to do is click on our um, water post-processing volume. You can see it's 50,000 by 50,000 units. And we really want this to be centered. So make sure its location, its X and Y location is 0, 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of use this for a frame of reference to understand um, where we need to be taking a screenshot at. Um, I've also, my safe zone, I've also set its radius to 50,000. Um, but that won't matter. I'm just letting you know that that's what I've done, so I'd probably recommend copying that value as well. Now, if we go to the perspective and click on top and make sure that this setting here is set to um, lit instead of wireframe, you can now sort of get a, a bird's eye view of the map, and this is going to be really useful for us in a second. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the drop down and click on immersive mode. And just click on the, um, we'll click on something, okay. Let's just drag this over here. I just don't want to be able to see any arrows or anything like that. So we'll kind of, there we go, that, that looks pretty good to me. So now press the Windows key on your um, keyboard and then type in snipping tool. And then press enter. And then just click on new. And we're just going to try follow the edges of this volume. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that looks pretty good to me. Go ahead and click on save and then just save this to your desktop under the name uh, map image. Now we're going to take the map image and drag and drop that into our UI folder. And you can see it will create a new texture with the name map image. And to get out of that bird's eye view we're in, just make sure that you click this and set it back to perspective. You can also go to the drop down here and make sure that immersive mode is turned off. Because we really do want to see... Uh, certain things in the game and if you did anything like I did um, You can see I actually moved this blocking volume out of the way just so I could see a bit better I'm just going to move that back to where it was So now everything's back to where it was and we now have this map image that we can work with in the game Okay, so now we're going to make a new piece of UI We'll right click go to user interface widget blueprint and we're going to call it widget blueprint underscore map and this is going to be the map that will show on the screen when the player presses tab and while we're at it let's just go to the edit and project settings and we're going to add the input for when the player wants to bring up their map so go ahead and click on input go to action mappings and we're going to call uh, this one open map and we'll link that to the tab so when player presses tab open the map let's open up our map now and it comes with a canvas panel we're actually going to delete that and just drag in an image and drop that on there and we're going to click on the image here 
and we want to select the image to display under the brush section the image is going to be map image so make sure that is selected and you'll see that it's a little bit distorted by default it's a little bit warped um, so we're going to have to edit some settings here to get that to display properly um, so let's try to type 900 by 900 and still not getting anything going on here Ah, so the thing I was forgetting is where it says fill screen, you want to go to desired. So now whatever image size we desire, it's going to use that instead. And uh, let's go ahead and make our image 1000 by 1000. That's just going to make the math a lot easier later on when we try to convert from the image space to different coordinate spaces and things like that. It just makes the math a lot easier when it comes to that. So we've made the map. The map is actually incredibly simple. It's, it's pretty much just a picture. Um, but now we need to draw the safe zones onto the map. So when the player opens up their map, we're going to show a circle on the map. Um, I won't do that just yet though. For now, we're just going to make a, um, a main map. So this is a map. This is a widget. And we're going to nest that inside another widget. And this will just allow us to add more information to the map later on if we want to. So we might want to add some extra info to the main map. And doing it this way, we can add a main map, we can add a mini map, because we're nesting this map inside of other things. So we could have a main map, mini map, whatever. We'll open up the main map, and we're going to drag and drop um, a canvas panel onto here, and then we're going to drop a map onto that panel. And then we're going to drag an image, and we're going to call this image the player marker. This will show the player where they are on the map. So drop that onto that canvas panel and I'm going to call it player marker. Now we want to get this all set up. There's a ton to do. Well, not a ton, but there's a little bit to do to get this set up. So the way we're going to set this up, we're going to go to this canvas panel to get started and we're going to set its size to be 1000 by 1000, just like our map was. And then we're going to set the alignment to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then make sure that it's anchored to the center like this. We're then going to click on the map here and you can see that the map size X and Y is set to 130. We want to change that to be 1000 by 1000 so that our map actually shows up. And you can see I accidentally did it with the player marker instead. So I want to make sure that I have the map selected and set that to be 1000 by 1000. Okay, there we go. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we're going to anchor the map um, actually we don't need to anchor the map, let's just um, set up the player marker now. So click on player marker and we're going to make the player marker's position x be 50 and then go ahead and set the size x and y to be 30 by 30. So that basically just makes the player marker nice and small. Now I don't actually have any icon for the player marker but there's one inside of the engine. So if we click on show engine content make sure that that's selected and then if you type in text render click on the text render actor icon. This is just an icon, it's actually an A, but when we make it nice and small, it just looks like an arrow. So we can use this to represent where the player is on the map. It's a little bit of a messy solution, and if you have an arrow icon, by all means, feel free to use that. Um, but I'm just gonna go with the, the actor icon here, because that seems to be a good replacement. And we'll set the alignment to be 0.5 by 0.5. We are going to make sure it's anchored to the center, and then make sure our position's 50 and zero. Okay, and in fact we could just do 0, 0, it doesn't need to be 50, 0. Okay, so um, the next thing that we want to do, um, we're going to do some clipping with the map as well, just to make things look better. If you click on the map, we're going to click on uh, Clip to Bounds under the Clipping section. And this is going to be quite useful later on, um, just to stop the safe zone drawing outside of the map's bounds. It'll just look quite bad. Anyways, um, what I'm going to do now is make it actually show up for the player. So when we press tab, open up the map. So how are we going to do that? To do that, we're going to go into our player controller. And inside of our player controller, we're going to go, we'll go up to the top here. And I'm just going to type in open map. And you can see our action event for opening the map has appeared. So we'll click on that. And now we can respond to the player pressing the tab key. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable. So let's go create widget 
and let's create our map. So we'll click on main map. We're going to set the owning player to be self. And I want to store this in a variable. So click promote to variable and call this map widget. And just like we did with the rest of our widgets, we're going to store it inside of the widgets category. So just go to category and select widgets. And then we can compile and save. What we want to do is we want to check if we already have created the map widget. So we'll go ahead and hold control, drag in the map widget, check if it is valid or not, if it has been created. If it has been created, what we want to do is just add it to the viewport. If it hasn't been created, what we're going to do is create it. Once it is created, we can add it to the viewport. Hold, Alt, disconnect this and plug in the map widget instead. And then we can plug this into here. So I'll show you what this is saying in a second, but just to finish this off, we're going to go to map widget, hold control, and then type in remove from parent. So what we're doing here is we're saying if the map's not being created, create it, store it in a variable. If it already is um, created, just add it to the viewport. And then when you release the open map key or when you release tab, we're going to remove the map from the screen. So we can actually try this out in the game now. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and press tab. And you can see the map appears on the screen. Okay, so the next step is to get the safe zone drawing on the map. So we're going to open up widget blueprint underscore map and come into the graph here. And we're going to override a function called on paint. And on paint, by overriding that, it will allow us to draw things onto the map. Specifically, we're going to be drawing a circle, and we draw things to the map using this thing here called the context. And the context has a bunch of different drawing functionality inside of it. So we'll get the game state, because the safe zone is stored within the game state, and we're going to cast it to BR. And then we're going to get the safe zone like that. Next we want to check if the safe zone is enabled because if the safe zone is not enabled we don't want to show it. So we'll go ahead and get enabled and we'll also make sure that it's not hidden so get hidden like that as well. So we want to make sure that it's enabled and not hidden in the game for us to show it on the minimap. So we'll type and and plug that in there like that. And then we can feed this into a branch to check if the safe zone is visible in game and enabled. And if so, we can then draw it onto the player's map. Now to draw it onto the player's map, we need a couple of values. We first of all need to know how big the safe zone is. To do that, we can get the actor transform, break that apart, and we're going to use the scale to determine how big it is. Now because the... Um, because the map is 50,000 units and we want half of the scale, we need to divide by 100. And what we're doing is we're converting world scale into 2D coordinate scale because the map's 1,000 by 1,000. So we need to divide by 100. And now we have the size. We also need to know the location to draw the map at. And we need to get that in 2D space, so to do that we're going to convert the location of the map to a vector 2D. And then from there we're going to divide that by 50 because we need to convert that into um, 2D space. So hit float and we're going to divide by 50 and then we need to add 500, 500 to that, which is half of the size of the map. So type in 500, 500. So now we have the size of the play area in pixel space and also the coordinates in pixel space. Uh, now comes the hard part. We need a function that will draw a circle to the screen. And this is really complicated and I'm sorry, there's really no way around it. So if we type draw, we have a bunch of options. We can draw boxes and, and lines, but <clears throat> to get the circle working properly, we're going to make a macro to do this in. So a macro is just a way of making our code more compact. So go to macros 
add a new macro and I'm going to call this macro draw circle and we're going to need a bunch of inputs for the macro the first thing we need is we need it to have those um, executable pins the white ones so if you just select exec you can add those and I'm going to call the pins exec and I'm going to call the output one out so to draw a circle we need to know various different things the first thing we need to know is the context the drawing context so add a parameter paint context and I'm going to call this context and then in the drop down this is a very advanced programming thing but it's called pass by reference and I don't expect you to guys to know what that means but hit the checkbox if you've done any program you, uh, programming you will know what pass by reference means but for now um, I'm not going to explain it, just know that paint context needs to be passed by reference. We're going to add another parameter, this one does not need to be by reference. And um, this is going to be a vector 2D. And we're going to call this coords. This is the coordinates that we want to draw the, um, the circle at. The next thing we need is the color of the circle. What color are we going to make it? So type in linear... linear color and select linear color and we're going to call this one color finally we're going to add a float and we're going to call this one size the way that we're going to draw a circle is we're going to do a loop and we're going to loop 360 times so type for loop first index is 0 last index is going to be 360 this is going to execute something 360 times and we're doing this because there's 360 degrees in a circle. Okay, now um, stuff's going to get complicated here. I don't expect you to understand this because this is fairly advanced programming. We're just getting this out of the way because we need to draw a circle to the screen and this is the easiest way that I know how to do it. If you're a bit more of an advanced programmer, you will be able to understand this, but I'm not going to go very in-depth here, because otherwise it would just take far too long. We're going to use something called draw line, and we can plug the context in like that, and now we need to work out position A and position B. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a vector 2D, And we're going to take the vector 2D and we're going to add it and plug that into the A. And we're going to do the same thing for the B. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out the direction using a little bit of trigonometry here. So we're going to do, if you drag out and do cos D for cosine of degrees. Plug that into there like that. And then we're going to multiply that. And we need to multiply that by the size. And then we plug that into the X. Next we need to come down here and type in sine D and select sine degrees. And we need to do the exact same thing. Now what we need to do is also multiply that value by the size. So do float, multiply by float, and plug in the size there. And then this is going to be our Y component. Okay, I know this is pretty, pretty complex here. Um, but from here we want to type coords into this plus here. Or sorry, plug the coords into the plus. So now we've figured out position A. We're going to do the same thing here. For position B, go ahead and copy and paste these bits here. However, this time we're going to drag out and type plus and add one. So do that like this. And then go ahead and plug this into here like that. And make sure we're multiplying these by the size. So we're looping through every degree in a circle and then drawing the lines from one degree to the next. I know that's really complicated if you're not, um, you know, a big programmer, 
but that's what we're doing. That's the most basic way I can explain it. Make sure that coords is plugged into here and into here. You need to do that. Okay. Now, what we'll do is for the tint, we're going to uh, connect color up to tint. So that's it. That's all we need to do. And then when that's completed, plug the completed into out. What this is doing is it's drawing a circle. It's going to take these options and use that to draw the circle. And now we can use that inside of our on paint. I know that's really hard to follow if you're a beginner, but you really don't need to know it anyway. It's just a little drawing algorithm I've written to draw a circle to the screen. So now from here, we can do our paint circle. Go ahead and type in paint circle, or sorry, I called it draw circle. And now we can use that. We need to plug the context into the context. We need to plug the coordinates in like this. And we need to plug the size in like this. And that's it. So I know that's very complex, what we've just done. And you really don't have to understand it. But what that's now going to do is it's going to draw a circle onto the map. One small mistake that I made, by the way, is that under the color, you'll need to click on the color picker and make sure all of these are set to 1. Now to test this out in a more quick way, I've clicked on the safe zone, I'm going to open up the safe zone, and I'm going to select the hold time, and I've just put it as 20. So now when I go into the game, I only have to wait 20 seconds to actually see it show up on the map. So let's jump into the game here, and I'm going to show you it showing up on our map. And you'll notice that as the wall shrinks in size, um, it actually decreases on our map as well. So it's really cool. The two are linked together. So check this out. I'm going to come into the game here. And I've got my map up. And within the next, say, 10 or so seconds, we should see it appear on the map. So here's hoping. There we go. And notice how it's shrinking on the map. So as it shrinks in the game, we're going to see that happen on the map. So how cool is that? Awesome. We've got it working. The next part that we need to do is we need to show where the circle is going to go next so that players know how to avoid the storm. We need to know where it's going next. So disconnect this um, using Alt. Hold Alt and click to disconnect this inside of the widget blueprint map. And we're going to um, drag out from the safe zone. And if the safe zone has not finished shrinking, so um, type in get finish shrinking and get it. And then we're going to check, have we finished shrinking? And if we haven't finished shrinking, we're going to draw another circle here. So we're going to use draw circle again and connect that out to the um, return node. We're going to plug the context in like this. And now we need to get the next location and the next radius. And I'm going to draw this in red. So um, for the R, put 1. And now we're drawing a red circle showing you where this, the circle is going to go next. Drag out from the safe zone. Get the next location. Oh, don't do that one. Get next location. Make sure that you select this one here. And then um, from here, we can make that into a 2D vector. And we can use that value. We can divide it just like we did over here. So go ahead and divide that value. Divide. So divide by a float. We're going to go ahead and select um, 50, I believe it was. So select 50. And then from there, I'm just making sure, yeah, divide by 50 we did over here. So now we're just going to do a plus, And what we'll do here is just do 500 and then do 500 for the Y as well. And now that we've done that, we should be able to connect that into the coordinates. The last thing to do is the size. And we do that by dragging out from the safe zone, getting the next radius, dividing that by 100. And then from there, plugging that into the size. So drawing the safe zones is very technical, and I really don't expect you as a beginner to get all of this. Just know that we've made these macros called draw circle to draw the circles, and we're using the safe zones data 
to draw the circles to the map. Okay, so I'm here inside the game now, and now you can see how this is working. You'll see that the white circle is moving inwards, and it's slowly, slowly, slowly moving towards the red circle. So it's going to converge in on the red circle, and we'll just wait for this to finish. So we'll wait for the white circle to meet the red circle, and at that point it's going to generate a new red circle. And that's how the storm works. It'll keep going in, and it'll do this multiple times until it reaches our minimum radius. So let's wait for it to hit this red circle here. And check it out, it's going to make a new red circle and all of that of course is getting drawn onto the map. So how cool is that guys? The last thing we're going to do is open up the main map and we're going to make our player's um, little arrow here actually match where he's standing on the map. So to get our marker matching where our player actually is in the game, we're going to go to the graph here inside of widget blueprint main map. And we'll come into tick here. And what we're going to do is every time a new frame is drawn to the screen, we're going to set the position of the player marker. So hold control and drag in the player marker and then set its position. Ah, to set the position, we need to use this thing called slot as canvas slot. Because the marker is a canvas slot, meaning it needs to be moved around a canvas. So once we've done that, we can then set its position. And we're going to connect this up like so. And then what we need to do is we need to get the owning player pawn. We need to get the location of our player. And then we're going to divide this value. But first we'll cast it to a 2D vector. And then we're going to divide it by 25, 25. And that will convert it into pixel space so that we can draw it to the map. Let's plug that into the position, and that should set the position just fine. The other thing we need to do is we need to rotate the player's um, marker depending on which way they're facing. To do that, we're going to go ahead and get the actor rotation. So drag out, get actor, rotation, and we're going to break the rotator. We're going to normalize the axis. This will give us a, a angle in the range of negative 180, 180, which is much easier to work with. And then from there, we're going to add 90 to it because of the way the icon's facing. And from there, what we can do is we can drag off from the player marker and set the render angle. And this is just going to make the marker move when we turn in the game. So we'll connect that up to angle, connect that up like that, save and hit play and let's try this out. So I'm standing here in the middle of the map and when I press tab you can see here's my player marker and when I turn the player marker also turns. One problem though is that it seems like my marker moves a little bit too fast. Notice that it says my marker is standing right on the edge of the map here almost but I'm nowhere near the edge of the map. If I go back into my map, let's fix this problem. After a little bit of testing, um, I had a little issue with the precision of your player's icon. Just make sure that you use divide by 50 and that will fix the issue and the player should appear in the right place on the map as I'll demonstrate. So if we drop into the map and I press tab, you can see that the precision of the map marker is now fixed. So wherever I actually stand on the map, it will be true. And check it out, how cool is that? We have a map, we can see the player on it, the player spins, we can see the, the wall and where it's going. Oh man, I love game development, very fun. Anyways, I know this has been a very stressful episode, I'm losing my voice, so uh, I do need to take a break. But thank you very much for joining me, um, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.